Hello everybody, my name is SteeloMac25 and today I'm going to bring to you a review based on one of the all-time greatest Star Fox games, if not the original one. It's Star Fox for the SNES. It is a dated but still fun game to play. Uh, 1993 saw the advent of the Super FX chip with this appendage of 16-bit SNES. Could also use polygons in its games. 3D gaming was at the time in its infancy on the consoles. So this was a real breakthrough. Such a chip would eventually be used in about seven games, including the simply wonderful Super Mario World 2. The game that initially showcased the possibilities of the chip was Starwing, which was called Star Fox, which was Star Fox back in Europe. Excuse me. The game would eventually become one of the biggest Nintendo franchises, although not in the same league as Mario or Zelda. At the time of release, Starwing looked absolutely amazing, due to the Super FX chip. The game featured fully 3D objects and environments moving fluidly on the screen. Controlling your Arwing spacecraft and going up against fleets of fighters and huge battleships looked and felt great. Unfortunately, Starwing's graphics haven't aged at all that well. The graphics looked rather bare because objects and environment, for the most part, were in texture. They also don't use a lot of polygons, which make them look very simple and sometimes rather abstract. Another point is that sprite-based graphics, like explosions and planets, for example, don't get all that well along that well with polygonal graphics because they are more detailed than the polygonal objects themselves. Star Wing also isn't an ugly game. The point is that the visuals show that they age all too clearly. This is most likely due to the reliance on technology, which back then was new, exciting, and unlike anything seen before. Three-dimensional gaming have become a long way since then, which makes Star Wing look decidedly dated. Now, if you look closely, you're going to see the world map of the Star Fox game. The bottom left, you start off in Corneria. That's the defending planet. That's the home planet where Fox McCloud lives, and he has to follow orders from General Pepper, who's the Cornarian general. And uh, he has to, he has to, and the mission is to travel all the way up to, to Venom and stop the evil uh, scientist named Andros, who's uh, invading the Lilat system using his own uh, devices and technology and his own army. And, he, and his army is spread throughout different planets all over the Lilat system. So Fox has to travel through different paths to reach them. It doesn't matter which one because the same destination is Venom. So for the easy path, he would travel from Corn Area all the way through Asteroid Field, through the Space Armada, then Meteor, and then to Venom. The, the normal path would be from Corn Area through Sector X, and then through Titania, then through Sector Y, and then Venom. And then the hard path would be through the Asteroid Field, then Fortuna, and then Sector Z, then Macbeth. And all the way up to Venom. As each difficulty is uh, progressed, or you know, as difficulty goes up, the enemies get tougher. There's a, a number increases. The damage that they give the Fox and his teammates, they're, they're 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 a lot more than the easy path. That means they can get damaged more easily. And uh, in the final boss battles with Andros. It gets very tough, so it's more ch it's more of a challenge. But that's the way that's the way it is, and it's just being fair. But after each after each level, there's a there, there, there's a boss unit that 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 that, that Fox and his team have to take down. That's the whole spiel of the playing Star Fox for the SNES. Starwing has a great soundtrack which add an amazing sense of grandeur to the proceedings. It is suitably bombastic and energetic. Sound effects are good too. The lasers, bombs, and explosions sound just right. They are, in all honesty, no real problems with Starwing's audio. Starwing tells the story of how the anthropomorphic mercenary team, known as Star Fox, repels an invasion attempt by mad scientist Andros. 
but then you take the fight to him in his base of operations, the planet Venom, and they save the tranquil planet Corneria. Starwing is an on-rail shooter with all that entails. The R-Wing essentially flies ever forward through a long invisible tunnel, but has the freedom to move freely within this boundary. The main aim of the game is of course to shoot at the incoming enemies and dodge their attacks. Controls are in general up to the test but can feel a little bit crude and clunky, especially when comparing the directional cross used in Starwing to the analog stick it used in modern games. At the end of each level the Star Fox team faces an end of the level guardian. These are usually large, heavily armed, and there are usually only a few blinking parts where hitting them actually causes some damage. With possibly one real exception, these parts play much the same as the rest of the game, given the impression the Guardian is moving backwards instead inside the already mentioned Invisible Tunnel. The exception being attacking a central energy core inside a space station where your army has to fly in a circular room. Even so, the experience is much the same, only a tad confusing due to the aforementioned circular nature of said room. The locals where the fighting takes place are surprisingly varied. Outer space, in orbit around a planet, through an asteroid field, on the surface of several different planets, and even some nebulas, Starwing takes the player on a varied journey. Even so, the experience never re really changes that much. The planets, for example, may have different themes like oceans, volcanoes, and wastelands. But the gameplay stays much the same, only with a another background. Perhaps the statement is lacking a little much needed nuance. Of course, the challenges are somewhat different and the same can be said about the level of pacing. Dodging asteroids is not the same as dodging falling pillars and shooting other spacecraft as different from shooting ground-based tanks. However that may be, the game does feature a little lack of variation when it comes to the actual gameplay. The player can choose one of three predetermined routes to Venom, simultaneously choosing a difficulty grade. Although each route features some similar environments, this is still a nice touch and it breaks up some of the mo monotony that could have appeared otherwise. Starwing doesn't feature a way to record the player's progress. This is probably for the best, saying that while Starwing can be challenging, it can also be short. Each of the three routes is in itself not that long, and the old proverb that practice makes perfect holds true when it comes to the challenge provided. Eventually, the player will learn the best way to tackle each level, and in time, he or she will be able to breeze through each of the three routes. Although Star Fox is decidedly dated when it comes to its graphics, the gameplay is still good to this day. The game remains challenging, exhilarating, and fun. The controls can be a little clunky, but doesn't ruin the overall experience. Starwing truly was a milestone for the SNES. Its graphics were both spectacular and its premier feature, but the, graph but the game also managed to be more than just a glorified tech demo. Like Pilot Wings and F Zero before it, Starwing managed to overcome such insinuations. Starwing's biggest problem is most likely the fact that it has been superseded by its own successor, the Lilat Wars on the Nintendo 64, aka Star Fox 64, is to all intents and purposes a remake of the game under review and improves on it in every single way. Would I recommend Starwing? Yes, most likely I would because it is a piece of history, yet at the same time it, is, it remains a great game. And uh, that's pretty much it. I apologize for stuttering and uh, just not not, not being 100% uh, cohesive. I'm not really a public speaker, but I gotta get, I gotta get uh, through it one way or another. One, I just can't, you know, the, 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 more, the more I practice, the more it gets, it gets better. But anyhow, <laughs> I hope you I hope you, you you enjoy my input my insights on this video. If you if you did, feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, and uh, catch me on the next uh, game review. See you.